the main blessing that the Creator revealed by giving the Torah to His beloved children was that the merit, that by that merit He hand them the Torah, the Holy Tablets, the Bible, the 24 books of the Prophets, and the oral Torah that had been given to us by the sages is by the merit of our unity. The unity of the nation of Israel was described in the Bible in the way that they were standing in front of Mount Sinai to grab and hold the holy words of God and they were standing ke'ish echad belev echad as one person with one heart. When our hearts are aimed together and connected to each other, then we become like one person. When love is our connection, then we're holding hands and then we become a vessel for the godly light of the Creator. A known thing is that when the Creator told Moses, go and command your people, my people, with the Ten Commandments, Moses was supposed to go and read them to the nation of Israel. But while he was walking, holding the holy tablets, Hashem already started to speak and talk to his children. And he said, Anuchi Adonai Elohecha, I am the Lord your God. Lo yelecha Elohim acherim al panai. Don't replace me and worship another. Don't think that there is another God except for me. And the question why the Creator sent Moses to speak to his children and then he himself opened his mouth and started to explain is very clear. The Creator had such passion and such great will to be one with his children and he was waiting for that moment to take place already and when he had the opportunity like a little kid so to speak he was full of excitement and he could not hold himself from talking to his children The last redemption, the complete salvation of the world, of the universe, is the moment that all the creations since the beginning of time are waiting for to happen. And especially the Spirit of God that is called the Shekhinah Kedusha, that is the feminine spirit of His grace and godliness, the emotional portion of His godliness, the feeling and the loving and the caring shine and light of His godliness, the one that is with us in all our struggles, the one that lives inside of us, the one that is supervising on us with great compassion and love, the one who makes sure that we will have all our needs, that spirit is waiting with us, with the broken souls, with the scarred and burnt spirits here on earth for thousands of years, for the redemption to take place. And that reunion 
that completion, that correction of heavens and earth to come together again will be so greater than the first redemption when our people been redeemed by Moses on their way out from their prison in the darkness of Egypt it will be so many times greater that people will stop talking and praising God for the first redemption. Today in all the holidays, in all of our days of joy and happiness, in all our blessings, we're always reminding the first redemption, the miracles that took place on the sea and the miracles that took place in Egypt and receiving and getting the Bible and the path and, and the entrance to the Holy Land of Israel and all those wonders that took place around 3,000 years ago are the light to our path today. But when the true, complete salvation for the whole wide world will take place, the amounts of wonders and miracles that we will experience, the great light that will shine will wash away all the memories from the past and all the angles and all the corners will be correct and fixed. There will be no more death. And those are not just prophecies or our nation's old legend or stories. That is the true reality that is in built up. And today we can see that, that souls are waking up from complete darkness and searching for the truth and with bare foots and bare hands carving their ways toward it with hearts full of passion and great love. And we can see that awakeness between the lost tribes of Israel we can see that among the lost tribes, people who never even remembered that they are Israelis, that they didn't even know that they are, and in one moment of their lives, a spark started to warm their hearts from within. Suddenly they woke up to realize and to understand, my life must have a purpose. My life must have meaning. My life worth something. I must be on a mission. I must do something with my power, with my talents, with my abilities, with my sources, with my energy, with my wisdom, with my life experience. And that is the godly spark that is treasured inside all the souls that lives in this universe, holy, godly souls, portions of holy, pure godliness, sifted and clean, elevated and shiny and healing sparks of soul that are in our hands to use. But for that we need to believe in ourselves. And the verse is saying, Im ta'aminu ta'amenu. If you will believe, people will follow you. People will believe in you. You might feel yourself as a small candle with a small flame, but by the fact that the darkness that is surrounding us is so great, your light is shining to a very far distance and people from four corners of the universe are looking at you as a lighthouse. Even if you find yourself full of lackings and even if you find yourself almost empty from Torah, almost empty from mitzvot, you can never imagine how far your shine can reach. You can never know. There are people who are suffering from great pain 
who never saw the light in their lives and their ancestors couldn't see the light for generations. And when they see you with your broken accent and with your lack of education and with your poverty and with your lack of happiness and lack of mental stability, with your broken mind and with the scars that are covering your being. But they see the honest heart, your honest effort to attach yourself to the truth. And it's a known thing that there is only one truth. There are no many truths. There is only one truth. Only one. If that's a plastic cup, so that's a plastic cup. Lies, you can say on that in thousands. You can say it's a car. You can say it's a mouse. You can say it's a keyboard. The truth, you can say only one. It's a white plastic cup. You can maybe go into details of what it's really built from. What it's really used to, for. But it's only that. There is only one truth. And when they see you carve your way to the truth, desiring the truth from Islam, from Christianity, from secular cultures, from this nation, from that nation, from Africa, from the US, from Europe, from Afghanistan, from India, from Israel, they see you. They see you from college, from the army, from the university, from school, from, from the streets, from the pubs, from the clubs. They see that you have changed. They see that you desire the truth. It wakes up the passion inside of them, that holy spark. Immediately, an inner attachment to you, to your honest path is pulling them out from their darkness. And they want to start following the truth from their place, from their lonely place, from their darkness. And they can enjoy your light if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're just a clerk in an office, if you work as, as a seller in, in Walmart or, or, or in a garage. If you're a homeless that walks in the street, if you're a person of truth and you desire the truth, the truth is shining through you and affects your surroundings. You should not become a genius or a preach, preacher or a mentor or a rabbi or I don't know who. You don't need to become famous to affect the world in a positive way because you have been created in a certain shape with different and unique qualities that are needed for the completion and correction of the world. There are people who need to take care of animals and in the same time you need to have teachers in school. You need to have people to clean the streets and you need to have people to design street signs. You need to have people who are good with math and people who are amazing with languages, people with great memories and people who forgets everything momentarily. We're all important and we're all useful for the sake of the world. Like that all the animals are different and they have different and unique qualities like that all the trees and flowers are dif different one from each other, but they're all important and they have a great use. Also you. And you're more than any other creation. You're a human being. You're a child of the holy soul of Adam and Eve. And your light is shining through you to your area, to your environment who needs you. And you should allow the inner light of your goodness, the quality of the light that has been treasured inside of you by the Creator to shine. For that you need to believe in yourself 
and not to let all those ones who are criticizing you and trying to break your spirit and to downgrade you in your own eyes and in the eyes of the world, you need to prevent them from rebuking you or at least not to listen and to keep on shining elsewhere. May the Creator bless us with self-confidence, with an amazing simple mindset to know that we are godly souls that are here on a mission to reveal the light and to uncover the truth no matter where we are. Believe in yourself and for that you shall be believed. Amen.